Hello and welcome to Cadwell Park for the BRSCC Fiesta Junior Championship with MRF tyres. And you join me in the holding area as the cars are getting ready to go out onto the track. Joseph Loke on pole position. He's the only returnee into the Junior Championship Series this year. Everyone else is coming into the series brand new. So we kind of expect Joseph to be up the front there, but there's going to be a battle behind him. Starting with Orton and Webster, see how they catch up and we'll see how these young drivers progress and develop throughout the year as they get to grips with these 150 horsepower machines. It's going to be great to see how they develop. Andy, talk us through all of the first action. Thanks, Lloyd. Well, this is the second race of the weekend. Uh, the results from the first race set the grid for race two. So it's yesterday's winner, Joseph Loke, on pole with Will Orton alongside him. Albert Webster and Dylan Hitchin on row two, whilst row three is shared by Bradley Beavers and George Davis. Jensen Brickley and Sid Smith are on row four together. It's the fifth row for Brianne Davis and Jake Triggs, whilst Joseph Knight rounds out the 11-car field. The BRSCC have done a great job over the winter of more than doubling the grid size for 2020, and there are more on the way. So a big shout-out to the BRSCC for really trying to breathe some new life into this always exciting championship. So the white and blue car on pole then. Yesterday's winner, Joseph Loke, launches off the line and he will lead the pack down towards turn number one. Not a great start from Will Orton alongside him though. So the number two car there, the AMD livery car of Albert Webster gets up the inside of him and a good start made by the blue and yellow car. That's Jensen Brickley who started seventh and is looking for a position in the top five into turn one. So it's Loke that leads the way. It is Webster second now, Will Orton third and fourth place might be Bradley Beavers, the red 29 car. There goes 99 through. That's uh, Sid Smith, who started eighth. I think he's lost one position off the line. The main thing is, though, they are all safely through the first couple of corners in this, their second ever big circuit race. Most of these drivers, they may have some karting experience, but they've never driven a real racing car on a real racetrack until yesterday. They completed nine laps of racing yesterday, so this is their 10th ever racing lap, and already they're starting to go side by side around one of the most challenging circuits in the UK. It's narrow, it's tight, it's technical, it's undulating, there are lots of off-camber and blind corners. And so far, it hasn't really been catching them out, but Albert Webster was very near to being caught out through the uh, gooseneck there. The second place car getting very, very sideways. He's getting away, though, uh, from Will Orton, who beat him to the runners-up spot yesterday. And uh, Will Orton actually falling backwards a bit here. Joseph Loke leads the way then. Webster in second. Will Orton in third. And everyone starting to queue up behind him. There's Jensen Brickley. So he did get into fifth position off the start. Great uh, get away from him. Uh, Dylan Hotchin, I think, is the one that's dropped back. The grey and red number 50 car. You can see him in the background looking to the inside uh, of one of the other cars into the hall bends. He wasn't quite able to make that one stick. That car gets a bit sideways, though. That car being the 281 of George Davis. And then defends from Hotchin into the hairpin for the first time. And, yeah, Dylan will have to uh, sit behind once again. So Dylan Hotchin there, great-looking car. That uh, uh, grey and red number 50 machine, but it didn't get off the line well. He started fourth, and he's well outside the top five now at the end of lap number one which is led by Joseph Loke by a comfortable margin. He won yesterday's race uh, by 13 and a half seconds. And he's looking to pick up where he left off after that first race of the season. He's leaving the real battling behind him. Fourth place scrap here. Number 29, Bradley Beavers. And number 246, Jensen Brickley, right on his tail. Brickley on his toes in this race, isn't he? Down in seventh yesterday, but... Uh, Already picking up two places on lap one, looking to make it a third now as he gets in the slipstream up the park straight and into park corner. Now, will Bradley Beavers defend the inside line? I don't think he has. And so Jensen Brickley was looking to the inside line. This is for fourth position, late on the brakes. And he goes through, nicely done for Jensen Brickley. And he covers off the switchback manoeuvre on the exit of the corner too. So into fourth spot now. And I reckon he might have the pace to chase after the top three. So Jensen Brickley really improving his pace here. As you would expect, I guess, because these drivers in their uh, their racing careers very much in their infancy. They are learning every time they go out on circuit, every lap they turn, every session. They come back, they debrief with the teams, and there's some very experienced teams as well. Oh, uh, I'll interrupt myself because there's a car off in the background at uh, Mansfield. Bounces its way back on the road. Not quite sure who that was. Uh, possibly Jake Triggs or Brianne Davis. It was someone just towards the back of the top ten. Uh, but yes, yeah, some top teams running cars in this championship. People like Jamsport, for example, who know how to set up a Fiesta. And they'll be working with these novice drivers, in many cases, to try and get the best out of them and get the best out of the cars as well. A bit wide there, Albert Webster out of the hairpin. Jensen Brickley, having got this fourth place away from um, 
the 29 car of Bradley Beavers is not really racing away from him, it must be said. And we're starting to stack up a bit now as they come across the start finish line again. So Loke leads, Webster second, Will Orton third, then the battle for fourth between Brickley, Beavers, and the recovering Dylan Hodgson, who goes to the inside of Beavers into turn number one. Brave place to make a move into Coppice Corner, but he has done it. Slides a bit wide on the exit, but he's got the move made before they get to Charlie's. And Dylan Hodgson, who finished just off the podium in yesterday's race, would really love to get into that top three in race number two. He's made life a bit more difficult for himself than he would like uh, because of the slightly tardy start that he made, but he is already starting to do something about that. Bradley Beavers slipping down the order, rather. Second place then for Webster, third for Orton. That gap looks to be coming down now as well, as Jamie or as uh, Will Orton, excuse me, uh, is starting to maybe just get the tyres up to temperature, gain a bit more confidence. That's another thing they have to learn about cold tyres. These are uh, short wheelbase, front wheel drive cars. And those rear tyres take a little bit longer to get up to temperature. That's why we saw a few of them having slightly tail-happy moments on the opening lap or two. Now they've got the temperatures and pressures built up, we might start to see the dynamic of the race shifting back in the favour of people like Will Orton, who drove so well in the first race of the year yesterday. Jensen Brickley, though, is starting to catch him, I think. So second, third and fourth possibly concertinoing together and second and third definitely are because it wasn't a good run over the mountain there for Albert Webster and Will Orton is now well within striking range. Now it's hard to overtake down into the hairpin and I don't think he's quite close enough to do that anyway. He forces uh, Webster to defend on the way in but uh, Albert doesn't run too wide on the exit and so uh, Will Orton stays behind for now. So the lap completed then in this second round of the BRSCC Fiesta Junior Championship racing with MRF tyres once again this year. Those MRF tyres being worked hard around the Cadwell Park circuit. A real driver's favourite but uh, it is a challenge for not only the drivers behind the wheel but for the cars and the engineers as well. Suspension takes quite a hammering through some of the uh, dips and the undulations. Got to have that rear stability built in as well. There are lots of blind off-camber corners which can very easily catch you out if the car isn't quite handling right. But, uh, I'll tell you what, so Will Orton's car seems to be handling right and it was very quick up the hill. Now was that a problem for Webster, a missed gear maybe? He suddenly seemed to slow and Will Orton's going to try and go right round the outside for second place and he's done it. Brilliant move. Opportunistic stuff there. I'm sure there was a mistake of some sort for Albert Webster. I hope it was a mistake and not a mechanical problem. No, the car seems to be up to speed again now but halfway up the hill the car just seemed to stop accelerating and that was all the invitation that Will Orton needed. He was closing in on Albert anyway and possibly just forced the mistake out of him. And so Will Orton into second position, kicks up the dirt coming out of Mansfield as he tries to make his escape and he really will want to make his escape here because it's now a four car fight for second. That little side by side exchange has uh, properly brought uh, Jensen Brickley and Dylan Hotchin back into play. As they come over the mountain it's uh, set to be a very competitive season I think in the uh, Fiesta Junior Championship this year with a lot of talented young drivers. Brickley there with a bit of a mistake through the hall bends and Dylan Hodgins seizes the opportunity, goes to the inside into the hairpin and elbows his way through. Now that is not a place that you tend to see a lot of overtaking but Brickley made a small mistake through the hall bends and Dylan Hodgin wanted to capitalise immediately and of course that's one of the joys of watching any form of junior motorsport because they don't really, haven't learnt any good or bad habits yet. They don't know what's possible. They don't know which corners you're not supposed to overtake at. And, well, we do occasionally see the odd pass into the hairpin, but uh, it's rare. And uh, Dylan Hodgin pulled off a very good one then. So Hodgin back into fourth place. So he's finally back to where he started. Trouble is we're halfway through the race already, so he's not left himself that much time. Certainly not as much time as he would like to try and get that first podium of the season. What's more, by running side by side with Brickley through the hairpin, it's held them up and allowed these two, Will Orton and Albert Webster, to pull away. So Orton in second, drives a bit defensively there into the hairpin. But, uh, Albert Webster not able to get alongside on this occasion. Head back through Chris Curve again then towards the gooseneck. Oh, Webster not short of commitment through that part of the circuit. He was sideways through there for the first couple of laps on cold tyres. And he's pushing on now and again a little wide over the curve for Will Orton. Got a glimpse there of the gap to Joseph Loke. It looks as though he's set to repeat that pretty extraordinary winning margin in uh, in race one yesterday. But I think if you give these other these rookie drivers another couple of races, they should be right with him. Don't forget Joseph is the only returning driver from last year. And he was a front runner all the way through 2019. There he is heading through 
final couple of corners through Barn Corner and then number 84 machine, Joseph Loke. So he def definitely was the, the pre-season favourite, it's got to be said. And he is living up so far to that billing. But I think that as the others learn, that that learning curve is very steep when you first start racing proper cars on proper racetracks. You tend to learn an awful lot and get an awful lot quicker in the first kind of half a season of racing that you do. So I think by the end of the year, they're going to be right with him. But uh, Joseph will hope that he's built up enough of a championship cushion by that point that he doesn't have to worry about being beaten by these, uh, by these uh, other youngsters. And uh, three of them here getting themselves ever closer together, fighting for second place. Still Will Orton from Albert Webster from Dylan Hotchin, who now looks the quickest of these three. He's reeled them in over the course of the last lap and a half or so. And he's almost now close enough to think about harrying Albert Webster for third place. Albert, therefore, will be feeling a bit more of a sense of urgency now to get on with this and get back ahead of Will Orton. He'll be kicking himself a bit as well because he was ahead of Will earlier on and possibly could have escaped had he not lost that position. Yeah, side by side action behind, and that is George Davis, 281, going up the inside of Jake Triggs, the number 80 car. So I think it might have been George Davis that I saw rattling over the grass down at Mansfield earlier on because it was a red car, and he is a little out of position. George uh, finished sixth yesterday, started therefore sixth for race number two. But he's, uh, well, that move I think put him back into seventh place. As we head into the final kind of third of this race, Albert Webster a bit wide into the mountain. And Dylan Hodgkin is on his uh, tail now. Now we know that Dylan isn't afraid to throw it up the inside into the hairpin. And not for the first time this race, Albert Webster didn't get a great run into the hall bends. So Hodgkin might be close enough to try this again. Does he look to the inside? Yes, he does. Sends it on the brakes. And is it a second move into the hairpin? Yes. Gets to the apex. Gets it stopped. If there was any contact, it was minimal. And Dylan Hodgkin has got that hairpin sussed, hasn't he? He's carrying really good speed out of the final part of the hall bends. And just bullies his way to the inside really into the hairpin but there's nothing wrong with what he's doing as long as he gets it stopped and gets to the apex first it's a fair pass a bit of a block pass admittedly but it's it, it's brutal and effective and it's got him now into a podium place now what can he do well, I was going to say about Will Orton, but first of all, he's got to fend off a sideways. Albert Webster is off the road. Oh, he got a wheel on the grass coming into uh, Charlie's corner and just about avoids the tyre wall. But Albert Webster has just thrown away a possible uh, podium finish, a second podium finish of the weekend. And that is a shame. He's made a couple of mistakes. The rear of the car has not looked exactly stable all race, really. And uh, when he got a wheel on the grass at a pivotal moment, turning into Charlie's, that was all it took for the rear to snap around. And he was lucky to avoid big damage there. So Albert Webster then continues, but uh, a lot further down the order than he was. And that now frees Dylan Hotchin to chase after Will Orton in front of him. And Jensen Brickley as well, who started seventh, is now into fourth. I'm not quite sure he's got podium pace, but at this rate, he might have a chance if they start tussling in front of him. If either of them were to make a mistake, he is close enough to take advantage. Screeching of tyres then as they head into the mountain. The MRF tyres being punished as they work their way through possibly the most technically demanding sequence of corners on the track. And one of the most technically demanding sequences of corners in the country, really. The mountain and the wall bends. Very good speed through there. Dylan Hotchin again. He's closing on Orton, isn't he? I think he's going to have a chance at, uh, at second place here. He is slightly running out of laps. They might have time for two more laps here. So let's see. Is there a last lap board this time? Or maybe next time around we will see it. Across the line they go. Yeah, no uh, last lap board. There is a black and white warning flag going out to someone who we have to assume has been exceeding track limits out there. Not sure who that's for. It's only a warning at the moment anyway, not an actual penalty. So uh, the, the drivers get a couple of warnings before the uh, officials start to add time onto their race for running just too wide over the curb. So just there, Dylan Hotchin might get uh, pinged for running the wrong side of the curb coming out of Charlie's. If any one wheel is outside of the white lines or behind a curb, in that case, uh, you are deemed to be exceeding track limits. And they're particularly hot at it. Hot, hot on it at uh, MSV owned circuit, Motorsport Vision owned circuits. Cattle Park being one of those. Right, check in here with number 99. This is uh, Sid Smith running a slightly lonely race towards the back of the field. You can see he's almost half a lap behind this podium scrap, which is closer now than ever. Dylan Hotchin absolutely has the pace to do this, and we're heading towards his favourite part of the circuit now. He's good through the mountain, he's good through the hall bends, and he's already made two very effective moves into the hairpin. 
tighter line into the left-hand part of the mountain. That means he carries better speed out of the right-hand element and into the hall bend. Right, can he get close enough? Well, yes, he's close enough already to have a go. Can he get to the inside? Is Will Orton going to see it coming and defend the inside line? Bradley, uh, uh, Dylan, sorry, can't quite get to the inside this time. And so Will Orton hangs on for now and they will now be going on to the final lap of the race. So this battle is going to rage right the way down to the end. And Dylan Hodgkin, well, he's made a move already into the first corner as well, hasn't he? Early on in the race, it was Bradley Beavers, I think, that he overtook into turn one. The last lap board is now out, and Will Orton is defending the inside line into the first corner, Coppice. And so Dylan Hodgkin, not close enough this time to have a go. But if he's just patient about this, he'll get a good slipstream out of the next corner, Charlie's. And up the park straight into what is arguably the best overtaking opportunity at park corner. Because you can go either to the inside or, if you're brave, you can carry all the speed you like around the outside and try and sweep through into Chris Kirby. He's going to be close enough here. The inside will be defended by Will Orton. Will it be an effective defence here, though? Or is Dylan Hodgson going to be able to break through his defences? Well, not into park corner, he's not. Will Orton just a bit late on the brakes, but he gets it wowed up just before he runs off the road and turns into Chris Kirby. So now... Dylan is starting to run out of chances. Joseph Loke hasn't had to overtake a single person all weekend. He's led every lap from pole position. It's been the definition of a dominant performance, this, for the returning driver. The real action has been behind him in both races, and this second race has been even tighter than the first. I think we're in for a great season of racing in the BRSCC Fiesta Junior Championship, racing with MRF tyres. Joseph Loke on dominant form, though, here at Cadwell Park. He's now only two corners from home. Heads into the hairpin for the final time. Inch perfect through there as he has been all weekend long into barn corner now as well and it's going to be another dominant victory for Joseph Loke. Two from two here at the belated season opener at Cadwell Park. He comes across the start finish line. The team are there to celebrate and he wins round number two of the championship and second place is going to be pretty tight I think at the end. Who's going to get there in second place? Will it be Orton? Will it be Hotchin? Waiting, waiting, waiting with bated breath. And here they come, and it is Orton behind, uh, ahead, sorry. 13.9 seconds adrift of the race leader this time, but a great battle right to the flag. So Joseph Loke, a double race winner at Cadwell Park. Will Orton second, and Dylan Hodgkin gets on the podium with Jensen Brickley fourth, Bradley Beavers fifth, ahead of George Davis, Albert Webster recovered to seventh, and Jake Triggs in eighth. Joseph Knight was ninth, Brianni Davis was tenth, while Sid Smith, sadly, we saw him running at the end of the race, but he didn't quite get to the chequered flag.